have something delicious to share with you today. My homemade cauliflower crust pizza. Hi everybody, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel, You Tips For You, where I share lots of helpful tips on beauty, fitness, healthy lifestyle, natural remedies, and so much more. Well, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you my homemade recipe for cauliflower crust pizza. It's so delicious. It's a great way for you to get more vegetables into your diet, and if you're on a low carb diet, this is great because you can enjoy the robust zest of having pizza in your life without having to worry about the, um, the carb load of the traditional pizza crust. And cauliflower is so healthy for you. Just look at all these vitamins and minerals, including high levels of vitamin C and vitamin K. It's also high in choline. Choline plays a major role in maintaining the health of cell membranes, synthesizing DNA, it helps your body metabolize fats, and it helps protect your nervous system from disorders. And cauliflower is high in fiber, which can help you lose weight because it slows down digestion and promotes a feeling of fullness. At only 25 calories per cup, and with 92% of its weight made up of water, you can eat a lot of cauliflower without worrying about gaining weight. And like other cruciferous vegetables, cauliflower is high in antioxidants, which help protect your body from cancer and free radical damage. So not only is it healthy, but it's an excellent, low-carb, gluten-free alternative to grains. It doesn't have a strong flavor, so it's not going to overpower the taste of your pizza. It provides a nice, soft, chewy texture to hold all your favorite toppings. All right, so there are four simple steps to making a cauliflower crust pizza. And step one is to make the cauliflower crust. Step two is to bake it. Step three is to place the ingredients for the pizza onto the crust. And step four is to bake it again and then enjoy your delicious pizza. All right, so let's get right into it. I'm gonna show you step by step how to make this recipe. Um, it's super easy and it's so delicious. I can't even tell you, my whole family loves it. To make your cauliflower crust pizza, you'll need one head of fresh cauliflower, one jar of tomato sauce, 16 ounces of mozzarella, two eggs, dried basil, dried oregano, granulated garlic, which is optional, but I absolutely love it on pizza and it is so healthy for you. Um, and some olive oil to coat your pan. You can use spray olive oil or you can just use it right out of the bottle. And finally, you need a cheese grater and a pizza pan. Before we begin, let's preheat the oven to bake 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, you'll want to coat your pizza pan with olive oil, and then it's time to cut up and wash the cauliflower. First, I trim off all these green leaves. Um, you don't have to, but I generally do. And the next thing I do is cut off that big stump at the bottom, and I discard it. Then I typically cut off the florets. Just cut them at the base of the stalk. Once I've removed all of the florets, then I take that center part and I either throw it away or you can use it in soup. So just cut them in smaller pieces. They're easier to wash that way and they'll be easier to go into your food processor if you're gonna be using a food processor. Just swish them around in a pot of water and then just take them out of the water and drain them into a colander. And then I always like to give it one final rinse with fresh water. And the next step is to grate your cauliflower. And you can use either a food processor to do that, or if you don't have one, don't worry, because you can also grate it on a cheese grater. It's super easy and it goes pretty quickly. Just grab pieces of the cauliflower and just grate it. Use the side of the grater that has the biggest holes. And be careful you don't grate your knuckles. I've done that a time or two. After you're done grating up the cauliflower, it's time to grate the mozzarella. You can obviously skip this step if you bought mozzarella already shredded. Now we're ready to prepare our cauliflower pizza crust. Yes, sir, this is about, I, about seven cups. You're not gonna use all of this. Whatever cauliflower you do not use, you can just steam it 
and or boil it and you have and you can eat it as a substitute for rice or pasta it's absolutely delicious cauliflower rice is very popular right now um, and it can be used in a number of ways I have a very large pizza pan and depending on the size pan you have you are going to either need more or less cauliflower all right so if and depending on how thick you want the crust the pan I'm using is 16 inches in diameter which is the typical size for a large size pizza. This recipe makes a perfect crust for a large size pizza. So here are all the ingredients that you're going to need to make your cauliflower crust. We have five cups of grated cauliflower, two eggs, and one cup of shredded mozzarella. So I've already measured my five cups of cauliflower and I'm going to add now my one cup of shredded mozzarella to the cauliflower. Next we're going to add two eggs and I always like to crack them first into a bowl separately and then beat them with a fork just to combine the yolk with the white. I found that it's easier to stir in the eggs that way. So you'll just add your two beaten eggs to your cauliflower and cheese mixture. And then you're just going to mix it all up. Stir it well to distribute the cheese and egg throughout the cauliflower until it's all pretty evenly mixed and wet. After it's good and mixed, your next step is to put it onto your greased pizza pan. And then you're simply going to spoon, and I put gloves on because I'm going to be handling this and pressing it in, and I just don't want to get it all behind my fingernails, but you just basically spoon it like you would kind of work with a, a pie crust, okay? This is how I'm doing it. And you just put it onto your pizza pan, your greased pizza pan. You're going to flatten it out and try to extend it out slowly to the edges of the pan. And when it cooks, it's going to cook all together and it's going to make one continuous crust. Okay, the cheese is going to melt inside of it, hold it together, the egg is going to cook. That's all going to hold it together. And you're going to be cooking this to remove the, uh, the moisture from it. It will come out of it. A good part of it will come out of it. And also, um, you're going to lightly brown it. That's how you'll know it's done. So work from the kind of the middle out, like you would if you're baking a pie. Okay? And make sure you put enough olive oil down because you don't want this to stick. I just want to mention that I came across some recipes that recommended using non-stick parchment paper to cover the pizza pan to keep the crust from sticking to the pan. But I personally don't prefer using it. I'd rather use natural olive oil instead of paper that's been coated with a chemical, especially baking at this high temperature. And there we go. It's ready to go into the oven. Um, it's a nice thin kind of size and it's a perfect amount. Okay, you're going to put your pizza crust, your cauliflower pizza crust, into a 450 degree preheated oven. And you're going to bake it for 20 minutes. I found that to be the perfect amount of time for the crust to be just right. And you'll know it's done when you see some small areas on top of the crust that look light golden brown. And then you'll see the edges more of a deeper golden brown and a little crispy. You can make this cauliflower crust as thick or as thin as you want it. Now when you make a thin one, it's definitely more cheesy uh, to me. I wasn't a big fan of the very thin, felt like it was just melted cheese, like where you know people use just a small amount of cauliflower and then you know a cup of cheese so I tried that recipe I did not like it uh, it was too oily for me too cheesy so I like I said I modified and, and I worked with something where I felt I really enjoyed this recipe um, if you want it really thick say like you know a half an inch thick and you want to use a whole head of cauliflower go for it just know though that it's going to taste more cauliflower ish and it's going to more or less kind of come apart uh, easier. You'd have to add probably an additional egg and probably um, a bit more cheese as well to get the right consistency.
So while I'm waiting for that pizza crust to cook in the oven, I'm going to make the rest of that cauliflower I have left over uh, on top of the stove by um, boiling it so that I can have it as cauliflower rice. And there's two ways you can make that. You can boil the cauliflower or you can steam it. Um, I think I like boiling better because it's a little bit mushier and I prefer it that way, but if you want it drier, definitely use a steamer basket in your pot and you can steam it. Um, it, it takes about 8 to 10 minutes um, till it's, it's, it's the right texture. Okay, it's just about to be done. My, my oven's counting down and I took a peek at it already. It's been about 20 minutes and I wanted you guys to see what it looks like, how you know it's done. It's got that golden brown color. Notice it's golden brown along the edges and it's just starting to get golden brown on the inside too. You can cook it longer if you like and um, you know and really make it like hard and crusty but I don't like the cheese um, getting hard and burned. The next step now is we are going to put our ingredients on this and make it into a pizza. Now it's time to add the first step is the sauce. Always put it in the middle and then I use a large ladle spoon and I spread it out from the center. All right. And I learned the proper way to make pizza. My father was a baker. Italian bread, all kinds of bread. You make pizza. All right, so then you'll add as you need. So I need some for this spot. Let me put some here. Now, however you like your pizza. I like my pizza saucy, and I like to, the crust to have sauce all the way to the end. I want every last bite to be so delicious and taste like pizza. I don't want it to drip in the stove, so I'm not going to go all the way to the very end, but spread it out nice. And when you use a ladle like this, it, it makes nice little pools of sauce. Next comes the cheese and you've already grated or shredded your mozzarella cheese so it should be ready to go and you just with your hand you sprinkle it nicely on top Now we don't add any salt to this pizza crust or this pizza because we get the salt from the cheese we get that in, in the crust it enhances the crust flavor and it enhances um, the pizza And you can make it as cheesy as you like. I just like to fill all the, the red spots with cheese. That's how I do it. Okay, now this is optional, um, but I like to add garlic powder to my pizzas. You don't have to. A lot of people like to add the garlic powder to their slice when they're eating it. But everyone in my family loves garlic, so I sprinkle it on and cook it with the pea, you know, right into the, into the cheese. Everyone loves that taste. And you can never use enough garlic to me. It's a really healthy and delicious spice. And we all just love it here. And the next ingredient is the basil. And you just shake some basil all over. And finally, we have oregano, which is I use oregano a little more sparingly than basil because it can make your food bitter, but it, it gives a beautiful taste. So just sprinkle it on gently throughout the pizza. And of course, oregano is incredibly healthy for you as well. Now, if there's anything else that you want to put on your pizza, pepperoni, mushrooms, um, now's the time to put it on. Slice your raw mushrooms and place them on, raw tomatoes, place them on. If you're gonna use peppers and onions, my recommendation is that you always cook them first. Saute them, uh, steam them, whatever you wanna do, and then put them on your pizza. Okay, they won't have enough time to cook in the oven if you use them raw. So only things that are um, gonna cook quickly can go on here. And mushrooms will be okay, and tomatoes and things like that. But mine is just gonna be plain, traditional, pizza. We like to add stuff on as we eat it, like grilled chicken and things like that. 
Um, so it's ready to go into the oven now. And this part goes very quickly. Basically, you're just going to cook it long enough to melt the cheese. Uh, remember, the crust is already done. Okay, and we're going to put it right back into the oven. She's in there now. Okay, we're going to put her, put, the, put that on eight minutes. Okay, it has been eight minutes. It's, it's time to bring it out. Oh, look, I'm hitting it with my glove. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Look at that. It looks fantastic. Now, I'm going to let it cool here for about five minutes um, before we cut it and taste it. All right? It looks terrific. I am so excited to have it. Now, if you notice, I did not burn the cheese on top. It's not overcooked. Um, it's just the right, you know, it's melted uh, and it's, it's not like it's getting like crusty on top, crusty brown. I, I don't like pizzas like that where they overcook the cheese and the cheese gets crusty on top. So this is going to be soft and cheesy and delicious. And we'll be back to sample it. Okay, it's been cooling for about five minutes. So it's time to cut it. And I have my spatula here just in case it's still a little soft. And we have to um, pick it up with a spatula. So I'm going to cut it first, and I'm just going to go right through it. Okay, pan is cool. I can touch it. Easy to cut. It's good. Now I'm going to taste it. Um, I can lift it, but it is definitely soft, softer than a pizza pizza. But since I, I mean, I can definitely lift it, but because I have to hold the plate and uh, I'm not sitting at the table, I'm just going to like push it to the end here and take a bite because I don't think I can lift the whole thing in my hand. I'm afraid it might fall apart a little bit. Mmm, it is phenomenal, absolutely delicious. Once it cools a little bit more, see, I can start to roll it. It's still a little very, very warm. And once it cooled off more, say about 10 or 12 minutes, I was able to pick it up easily, hold it in my hand, and take a hearty bite. To me, this is just the right thickness, this pizza. Let me show you again how it looks. See the thickness of the pizza? Okay, I think that's really just a really great thickness um, to make it. So just keep that in mind when you're making it because those paper thin uh, crusts, I did not enjoy that too much. I felt like I was just eating rubbery cheese or something. It didn't really, didn't capture me. Um, but this seems to be the way my family loves it. Well, I really hope you liked this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. And let me know below in the comments if you're going to give it a try. I think you're going to love it. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe because I have a lot more to come. Something of interest to everyone. And please visit me at my blog spot where I do a lot of writing. And I'm also on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram so we can stay connected there as well. All right, well, manja, abondanza, and let's enjoy. Thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate it.